New mum Rachel Allen is back glowing now on UK TV food, cooking and hosting a brand new and exclusive edition of Market Kitchen. Every day, a different dish. Quality standard beef and lamb, proud sponsors of Market Kitchen. I'm Matthew Fort. And I'm Rachel Allen. Afternoon Tea Week continues with the best books to keep you sipping in style. A child friendly after school supper, and we pimp up that quintessentially English classic, the cucumber sandwich. I see a maidenly blush come to your cheeks. <laughs> Very nice too. Our first guest is award winning chef and best selling author who's one of Norfolk's finest exports and indeed ambassadors. Galton Blackiston, it's fabulous to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. Something fishy? Are you yes, today? something. Two of my favourite ingredients: asparagus, sea trout. Do you know? Perfect. Two of my favourite ingredients too. So yeah. we're in luck. Our next guest is one of the biggest stars of the Irish food scene. His no-nonsense family food has catapulted his latest book to the number two spot of the Irish book chart. Kevin, you are very welcome. It's lovely to see you. And you are cooking a gorgeous midweek supper treat. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a lovely burger. Your kids are going to love it. Lovely. But she's a writer, presenter, performer, and self-confessed chubby glamour puss. Chubby, surely not. Glamour. It's our old friend Amy LeMay. Amy, you've been looking at some books for us, haven't you? About I have. Time? We're going to be tea-tastic today, so <laughs> get ready. <laughs> Is that your cup of tea? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and there's all of this as well. Breakfast time just wouldn't be the same without it. We celebrate 100 years of the taster. Chef Ben Tish continues his week-long tapas menu with a dish of jamon and manchego tortilla down in the market. And we give a British tea time classic a well-deserved makeover as we play Pimp My Cucumber Sandwich. With summer just around the corner, we're starting to see an ever-increasing variety of summer vegetables. And this week, we're celebrating the arrival of one of my favourites the broad bean. I love them too, but there are two schools of thought when it comes to how to eat them. You're either a pod-on or a pod-off kind of person. Now, a pod, I suppose if they were a bit smaller than this, then I would eat the pod at all. Yeah. But when I open them up and there are these little green opals of... Deliciousness. Vegetable deliciousness. Mm. That's it. What you about see, those, you? I, those tiny little broad beans, I don't think, need to be skinned. But you see when you have some of these calls old vulgar fellows. Horse ones, mm. then you need to, Definitely. what is it called, double shell, double shell them I or skin so. them. You Either when they're them, raw yeah. or yeah, when not, they're cooked. Not with their little teeny ones, no I wouldn't, but the yeah. larger ones, yes I would, because they're bitter and they're tough. That's skin. And they and get actually, underneath the plate. And would you do it yourself, or would you get one of your um, minions to oh, do it? Oh, of course I get minions to do it. No, <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't do anything. So. <laughs> now I'm going to make a salad that's going to go with a chicken dish for, um, or using broad beans. And the broad beans, actually, I'm going to be using are quite small ones. And I have actually double skinned them as well. So I've taken them out of the pot and I've peeled the skin off. Now, for this chicken dish, I've got chicken cut into pieces with the bones still attached, mushrooms and some marjoram and some cream. That's for the chicken. A little bit of lemon juice maybe as well. And then I'm serving it with a little broad bean salad. So I've got some broad beans, some lemon juice, lemon zest, olive oil, Really simple. Oh, and a little bit of white wine there, that's for the chicken. Now, first of all, I've actually gone ahead and done the, the first stage. The chicken's been cut into pieces. And can you see how it's really nice and brown on both sides? That's exactly what I want. Now, I'm just going to get equal quantities of white wine and stock, a little bit of chicken stock there. So about, say, 200 mils of chicken stock, 200 mils of white wine. And you, use the white wine that you're going to be drinking to go with this. Bring it up to the boil, put the lid on the chicken and allow it to cook for about maybe 20, 30 minutes. A couple of sprigs of marjoram would be lovely in here as well. Or a couple of sprigs of tarragon, even thyme, rosemary. Salt and pepper, great. Now the lid goes on that, comes up to the boil and it simmers nicely until you have something that looks like this. The chicken is cooked, gorgeous. It's just beginning to actually fall off the bone. So take the chicken out of the pan. The pan is still on the heat. And I just want to boil down these really nice juices. You've got in here, the, remember the sprigs of marjoram or tarragon or even thyme, the white wine and the stock. So you're going to have a really 
gorgeous chicken flavor. You're going to have a really lovely tasting sauce. That's perfect. It doesn't need to be boiled down anymore. I'm just going to add in the cream. So about equal quantities or even a little bit more, 200, 250 mils of cream. Bring it up to the boil. And then I'm going to add a tiny little bit of lemon juice in just to give it a little bit of zinc. Must Bring say, it up to the boil first. Yes, Rachel, I'm very pleased to see that you pour your wine and your cream with the same generous hand. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Into my saucepans and my glass. <laughs> that's the wine. <laughs> now, while that's coming up to the boil and the cream is going to, um, it's going to reduce a little bit just as it boils, but I still am going to add a little bit of roux in to thicken it a bit more. So with the roux that we have here, and roux is just made from equal quantities butter and flour, whisk it in. And that's going to thicken the sauce. You know, it, this is quite a rich, creamy sauce, so don't thicken it too much. If you add too much cream in, it's going to be thick and cloying. You don't want that. A little bit more, probably about two teaspoons of roux altogether. So, just allow this to simmer a tiny bit, just for another few seconds while I throw together the broad bean salad very quickly. With the broad beans, I'm actually going to leave them raw. You could blanch them very quickly if you wish, but these, they're just gorgeous the way they are. So, because they're very small, if they were larger broad beans, I would blanch them. A few broad beans in there, a little bit of olive oil. Rachel, you share a passion for broad beans with Dr. Hannibal Lecter. I hope you remember <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, do that again. A <laughs> little bit of finely grated lemon zest and some lemon juice. So the broad beans, olive oil, lemon juice, lemon zest, sea salt, pepper. And this is the most gorgeous salad just to serve as a starter with some soft goat's cheese crumbled over it, even feta. Now. That is ready. Can you see that lovely sauce for the chicken? Little squeeze of lemon juice just to kind of pack it up a little bit. Okay, chicken gets popped back in. I've also got some sliced and sautéed mushrooms. They're going to go in too. So the mushrooms have been sliced, sautéed in just a drop of butter or olive oil until they're nice and golden. That's it. Some chicken. This is really, you know, this kind of dish, believe it or not, and I'm even saying this as an Irish person, doesn't even need potatoes. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's lovely, what just like say? this. The chicken with the cream, the mushrooms. <laughs> nice flavor from the marjoram. And then we're making it quite summery and serving it with this really good broad bean salad. So that's chicken baked with cream, mushrooms, and marjoram served with a broad bean salad. To make my chicken baked with mushrooms and marjoram, you will need chicken and chicken stock from your butcher, plus broad beans, mushrooms, marjoram and a lemon from your greengrocer. Make sure you have white wine, cream and butter in your fridge and flour in your store cupboard. Kevin, are you enjoying that? Yeah, but it's, I think it's perfect except there's no spuds. <laughs> no. You can't give an Irish man meat with no spuds. Gold, what about you? Lovely. Delicious. Mm. Perfect. It's a great column of beans, it's a classic combination, but I really think the beans just lighten it up and sort of balance the creamy bits. It's fantastic. Oh, good. Thank you, Rachel. Good, you're very welcome. Happy. Happy. No. I thought the broad beans were, were very succulent, they were light, fresh, um, and, and the combination of those with the chicken went really well. I really like broad beans, I've not had them cold before, um, but that was really nice with the lemon. Uh, I'd certainly try that with the chicken, yeah, absolutely. If you miss any of today's recipes, visit our website at uktvfood.co.uk. Still to come, we celebrate 100 years of the toaster, plus Galton makes the most of the new sea trout season, so we'll see you soon. This year, the toaster celebrates its 100th birthday, believe it or not. And to mark the anniversary, we have a range of toasters from different decades to show how they've evolved. Now, do these any familiar to any of you? <laughs> no, you're all too young. Aren't you? so, Phew, they're very so, stylish. Now. Yeah. Now, just imagine the 1930s, if you will. 
the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. The planet Pluto was officially named Pluto. This may come as a surprise to you. And I didn't know that. Of course, World War II broke out. So mm -hmm. this is what we were toasting um, toast on those days. Mm -hmm. now, actually, I think it's quite ingenious, don't you? I think it's gorgeous. I kind of like this, this one because you, I yeah. think you can keep a nice you know, cup of tea hot on top, don't you? I <laughs> think that's a great idea. Okay, yeah. now, 1940s, yeah. uh, the Frisbee was invented in 1948. Was it? More importantly, I was born in 1947. <laughs> in fact, they haven't got down here. And also penicillin was invented, which I'm not sure has right. anything to do with toasters at all. But um, it tells you the sort of world we were living in and you can see it's it's all sour. But you can only toast one side. No, but, yeah, so to the, but the, the bread to the just the slides out onto that and it automatically flips around. Because I can remember these. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite back then. But I quite like the, uh, the old green one. Uh, yeah, very colourful. Really That's the 1950s. The 50s, I think. In keeping with that colourful decade, uh, Ray Kroc started McDonald's. In the 1950s. 1950s. Did you know really? that? Oh, there you go. That. This is an education yeah, as well as uh, well, it's an exploration of toasters. I love this one and though, this is it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's and that's the kind of, I mean, a lot of these colours are being used by a lot, a lot of other brands now, aren't they? In their retro styles. Yeah, things come full I've got a few little, uh, would you like a little toaster quiz? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just like, do we have any? Do we have any? <laughs> no, you don't have any choice. Right, I'll tell you the toaster was first patented by General Electric technician Frank Shaler a century ago. But how many years later was sliced bread invented? Oh, it would have had an automatic yes. slicer, so it would have been about 1930s. 1929, not oh, wow. bad. How many hours a year does the average person spend making toast? I'd say 27 hours. 35. Oh, I think we were on fire. Pretty close, pretty close. Yeah. Who were the first people to make toast by placing bread near a fire? Neanderthal men? No. <laughs> <laughs> the Irish. <laughs> the Egyptians. <laughs> the Irish. So we were close. Anyway, from toasters to tapas, let's join Chef Bentish, who's in the market getting inspiration for his Spanish tortilla. Uh, welcome to the market. I'm just having a cheeky lunch break here. Uh, I'm doing one of my favourite things, eating tapas. I mean, I've got some amazing patatas bravas here, roast chorizo, piquet peppers, and an amazing tortilla. I really like tortilla, but I'm going to make one today. It's a bit more substantial. It's going to have ham in it, and it's going to have beautiful manchego cheese in it. So I'm going to finish this up, and then I better get off. So I've been given exclusive access today by Zach here to uh, show me his wonderful hams that he's got here. I mean, amazing display. Um, Zach, can you just explain what you got here, please? Right, we've got two really different Spanish cured hams. This one, the first one, is a white pig. It's a white foot, yeah? Yeah, from okay. Teruel in the east of Spain. Okay. Uh, that one's cured for a year and a half. Mm. Very light, very yeah. light flavour, yeah. Nice and meaty, though, good yeah. texture. And it's still a little bit sweet, I think, Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. Then very over good. here, we've got something completely different. Uh, Pata Negra, black okay, foot. Okay, black foot. This one's been cured for two and a half years, mm. a longer time, a bigger animal. Fed on acorns and grass. Okay. Oh, that's superb, superb. I'm going to be cooking a tortilla. Yeah. I want to put ham on it. What would you recommend? The Iberica ham. The Iberica, I mean, yeah. You've got a strong flavour, which would go nicely with quite mild flavours of potatoes. Brilliant, so I'll use that. Would you be able to dice some for me if I could take yeah. 50 grams of that? Okay, so join me later when I'll be cooking uh, ham on tortilla with manchego and chicory salad. The arrival of the sea trout season means that summer's really here for our next guest. He's here to cook this prized catch for us today. Welcome back, Galton Blackiston. Thank you. And um, do you often like no, sea trout? Oh, uh, one of my favourite this time of year fishes, sea trout, wild sea trout, beautiful. Do you catch them around this? Around yeah, the, you do. You catch sea trout. Norfolk? It can be netted or you, you probably actually, you need a licence, I think, to catch them yourselves, but you ain't going to tell a local who's been in Norfolk for donkey's years, <laughs> go, go and get yourself a licence. Okay, so what else can you put with it? So I'm going to put lovely English asparagus, nothing better than that. Uh, make a hollandaise with butter, egg yolks, lemon juice, white wine, white wine vinegar, and peppercorns and shallots. A simple dish, but... But hollandaise can be quite a sort of difficult thing to well, do. Well, that's why it? I want to say sort of a foolproof hollandaise, because it's done in a machine. It takes the, the beating away from hand, and I think there's less chance of it splitting by machine than there is by hand. I shall watch this magic <laughs> with interest. Thank you. OK, so to begin with, what I'm going to do is to just get a pan onto a, a moderate heat. And for the ease of cooking, I'm actually going to take the skin off this sea trout. And it's very simple to do. 
just like so. Uh, because, do I like to eat the skin of a sea trout? I'm not sure I do. Unless it's really, really crisp. And if it is really, really crisp, the chances are you've overcooked the fish. So, that's why I take it off. Now, into the pan, first of all, a little bit of olive oil and a knob of butter. And let it foam up a little bit. I don't want to do this over a searing heat because I don't want to colour the fish too much. So a gentle heat. Once the butter is melted, we're going to start frying. Let me just talk about the hollandaise here. In here is a shallot which has been finely chopped, a tablespoon of white wine vinegar, a tablespoon of lemon juice and a tablespoon of white wine. And you reduce that down over a moderate heat to about a tablespoon total content. Okay? And in here is a pan of butter, melted butter, and you're going to add both things really hot. So, to begin with, gently fry the fish. Don't forget to season it. Like so. Do you serve this oh, in your restaurant? Oh, crikey, yeah, sea trout. I love sea trout, as long with the same sort of thing as wild bass. Uh, it's just a lovely seasonal fish. Yeah. So when it's, it, it's one of my favourites. When does the season start? Well, I think the season is, at, well, sort of from April to July sort of time, I would say. I'm just going to remove this. When I think of all the hours that I've spent fishing for sea <laughs> trout in rivers and never caught a single one. Well, I have to say, <laughs> we're very fortunate where I come from to have, you know, expanses of... Of, of sea and we get lovely sea trout and you don't you just, tell me Gordon oh, you brilliant. go out and catch them yourself <laughs> don't you uh, yes I have done oh. I have done myself and there's nothing Is he better insignificant. This Galton hunter-gatherer oh. that I have the problem <laughs> with. Pop your asparagus into a boiling water okay like so. Salted. Now keep an eye on the fish give it a turn like there just lightly coloured and let it cook gently so and how do you tell when it's cooked when when you put your thumb on it and it just starts to pull away you know it's very easy to overcook fish very and we've all done it mm. so I would say that one and remember when you take it turn the pan off mm. it will continue to cook so err on the side of caution now into here two egg yolks seasoning salt and pepper give it a blast and then add your reduction, your liquor. About a tablespoon of total content. And you do that so. while it's actually still whirling. Yes, like yes, yes. Leave it for a bit. So it'll, just to let it emulsify to begin with. Yeah. Then, slowly add your butter in a steady drizzle, I would say. But this is actually, isn't it? It's very, very simple. You just, and you just it is, and you can that see in. that it's starting to emulsify straight away. Yeah. You take your time and get it to do. Butter is enough butter in there. It's a lovely, thick hollandaise. Now we're just about there. My asparagus will be ready. I'm just going to chop a few chives very quickly to put into the hollandaise. This is optional, obviously, but I quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then to serve it up, a nice white plate, some lovely asparagus, which I would like to just serve very simply, mm, asparagus loads of. Oh. There's nothing like yeah, English on. asparagus, uh, there really isn't. English asparagus. Or Irish asparagus. English or, or Irish, Irish. <laughs> and, and, and English sea trout. Little knob of butter onto the asparagus. Got to have that. Just in case there isn't enough butter in there. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Right, so, and then the fish. There we are, like that. Perfect. Some of my hollandaise. It works so well in here. And it's, this is a really thick hollandaise, which is actually even better. Oh, beautiful. Right, so let that come over. You have to be quite careful though, don't you, Galton, if you make a hollandaise in the machine, that if it hits something very hot, it can split yes, more it easily can, yes, than it can. if it's made um, on the but heat. But you just have to treat it carefully. Yeah, moderately, yeah. I would say. And there is my sea trout English asparagus hollandaise sauce. <laughs> To make Galton's pan-fried fillet of sea trout, you'll need sea trout from your fishmonger, plus asparagus, a shallot, chives and a lemon from your greengrocer. Make sure you have eggs, butter and white wine in your fridge, and sugar and white wine vinegar in your store cupboard. Oh Amy, you've got that glow in your eyes. <laughs> what do you make of it? 
that is just stunning. It's so silky in the mouth, the fish and the and the sauce and the asparagus just really makes it come Thank alive. Right. It it's, I, I think it's just this combination for a summertime dish. It was just unbeatable. It's oh, gorgeous. I can feel the sun just bursting mm. through the clouds, mm. the road of flavours over yeah. the tongue, that silkiness, mm. oh. that firmness of texture, Stop. the burst Stop. of asparagus. <laughs> Golden, you're a prince among chefs. Thank, Thank you very, <laughs> very much. Nice, I really enjoyed the sea trout because it tasted of the sea, it's really flavoursome, um, the asparagus went really well with it and the sauce was a perfect accompaniment to it. The sea trout is absolutely stunning for something that's quick and easy and the flavours were just superb. All today's recipes are available on our website, uktvfood.co.uk. Now still to come, it's time for tea as Amy LaMay reviews three of the best books for afternoon tea. See you then. All week we've been getting out our best china in celebration of afternoon tea. And when we asked our next guest to review some books on the subject, she threw a big tea party for all of her friends to try out tips and recipes and all sorts of other things. Amy, fabulous to have you on the show again. And um, is it true you did all of that just for us? Just for you, oh. Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it go? How did the tea party go? It was go? a great success. You know, it's not very often that we kind of take the time out to actually put mm. on a nice proper tea party. So my friends really appreciated mm. it. Um, and most importantly, everybody got goodies to take home, which is always the best oh, kind of tea lovely. party. <laughs> and what's the American? can take on tea parties and afternoon tea. It's a bubbly, it's getting quite big over there, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, I think the height of sophistication for some Americans is to kind of, you know, have that perfect image of English tea. So the tiered cake stands, your little cup of Earl Grey, the sandwiches, cucumber sandwiches, of course. Um, but there are lots of interesting trends happening at the moment. In the States now, um, there are special tea houses and, and little parlors where you can go. And women tend to go there to celebrate, say, bridal showers or baby showers and kind of like a celebration. But okay, probably so one of the most significant trends in mm. the States at the moment is the cupcake backlash. There is a great cupcake backlash at the moment you know I think we've all had Please. quite a few are cupcakes they, in the year. they are and um, although you, you know you'll we'll so always pretty. love them they're gorgeous they're so, adorable they, be, well, so they look like something the jewelry box yeah. but know, the thing is it's very difficult sometimes for bakeries to get the right ratio of cake to frosting and I think that in the it, what's so happened much. now there's too much frosting not enough cake what? people people can you can really only eat one of them at you a only push. eat the frosting so they're kind of I think that, you do, you yeah, they're kind of the shooting frosting. themselves in the foot so in a way so what do you so have instead the the trend now are mini bunt cakes oh. and uh, when I was in LA I visited a, a little place called kiss my bunt <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, and, yes. and they make all sorts of flavored bunk cakes. So just and the, the same bunk cakes, it gets its name from the tin, doesn't it? With the that's right. So the there's a hole the in the middle. They're lighter than cupcakes on the whole. There's not as much frosting, but you can still do all the exciting they, flavors I, I, and on, tastes. And that things. looks like you know that's a it's a home weave, home dyeing, macrame, clog wearing <laughs> tip compared to these ones. <laughs> So, anyway, so books, let's move smoothly on. Now, Amy, was this the first book that you reviewed? Yes, this is Juliana Orm's Afternoon Tea at Home Made Simple. Um, and this book is really a labor of love. Juliana runs tea classes at her home for mainly Japanese students, teaching them about the rich tradition of British tea. Don't they have a sort of tea ritual of their own? They do. Mm. That's why I think they're so fascinated with ours, oh, to be right. honest. Um, and Juliana's put together some of her recipes that she uses to teach the students. Um, and yeah, it's it's a charming book. Uh, exactly. There's a little bit of inconsistency with maybe some of the measurements and things like that. And she does use margarine, which I don't approve of. But you sort of love it, don't you? Uh, no. <laughs> but what I did do was I made her Victoria sponge sandwich, sandwich cake um, and I just replaced it with butter and it was a huge hit. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah. Good. Okay, and the next one? Yes, no. Have a look at that. Yes. Look at the next. 
Next up, we have the Hummingbird Bakery oh, Cookbook. So beautiful, isn't it? Doesn't it look lovely? So gorgeous. And does it does it actually look at, to bear up to its looks? When I got this book through, I thought, I just want to jump in, I want to bake everything, I want to eat everything now, 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 because it looks so enticing and yeah. appetizing. Um, I mean, wow, with a forward on, from Gwyneth yeah, Paltrow. Yes. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow and the friends. Um, unfortunately, uh, not everything worked to plan, and I made the blueberry ring cake, and I also made the lemon cupcakes, and it's very difficult for me to say this, but the measurements, the timings, the temperature um, recommendations, it just didn't work. I think it's style over substance, and they've had a lot oh of difficulty no. translating from their big bakery into... Let us cooking. draw a veil over the that. The cupcakes that they sell, are, you know, all, they taste delicious. And what, is the ago. Pretty. what is the third one? Now, I love this book. This is Afternoon Tea Parties by Susanna Blake. Have a look. Mm, pretty. Um, it is pretty, very pretty. It is. It's a bit chintzy and blousy, but it I love it chintzy. for it. I yeah. am chintzy and blousy. Excuse <laughs> me. It suits me down to the, the ground. The great thing about this book is that it gives you lots of options for afternoon teas. So, um, there are theme teas. Russian tea, Moroccan tea. There's a Southern American tea. Mm. A as well as your kind of traditional champagne tea. Did you try any of the recipes? I did. This cake is from one of the recipes in Susanna's book. And this is a spiced pistachio carrot cake mm. with the cream cheese frosting. And you see the lovely uh, crystallized uh, violets and mm. rose petals on there. And it was just such a huge hit. And all it's my guests lovely. got to take some home at the Amy, end too. Amy, a carrot cake, it's one of your five a day. Mm. It's health food, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I like to think, Matthew. <laughs> I never thought we'd have you on the show recommending us, you know, something light and healthy. But anyway, thank you very, very much indeed. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Still to come on, Market Kitchen. Chef Kevin Dundon has the perfect recipe to liven up family meal times. How do you eat yours? Amy, Galton, Matthew and I go head to head to pimp up the cucumber sandwich. But first, let's rejoin Chef Ben Tish from London's Salt Yard Restaurant, who's creating a Spanish tortilla in the market. Welcome back to the market. Uh, you caught me earlier having a cheeky tapas around the corner um, and getting some inspiration for a dish I'm going to cook today. Ham on Iberico tortilla with manchego cheese and a chicory and caper salad. I saw some beautiful ham from the market, beautifully marbled with fat there. I've got some caper berries here, some aged manchego, which is uh, Spanish uh, used milk cheese from La Mancha. Potatoes, Spanish onion, some chicory that's going to go into the salad, fennel, We've got some fresh marjoram, Moscatel vinegar, which is a sweet wine vinegar, Spanish one, very, very nice, and some beautiful free-range eggs. First of all, uh, what I've had to do is I've sli peeled and sliced the potato and onion very, very finely on a mandolin, and I've had them cooking away here for about 35, 40 minutes, you can see here, and you want them nice, melting and tender. So I'm going to just get these onions out of here, and then the potatoes as well. You can see these are really, really tender. It's really good. That's exactly how they should be. What's that? I'm just going to add some seasoning into here. There we go. And then uh, I've got my free range eggs here. Um, I would probably say four eggs for this. Depends on the size of the eggs. I want this to be fairly tight. And then I'm just going to mix this through. Make sure all the yolks are broken up. OK, next I've got my uh, hamlet barricade. It's not cooked or anything. It's just uh, taken straight off the leg and diced up. And you want them a little bit chunky so they don't overcook. You just really want to warm it through so they start releasing their fat into the, into the tortilla and that'll flavour it. Got that there. And then we've got this beautiful uh, aged manchego. Uh, I'm just going to grate some of this. There we go. Give that another good mix. And we're pretty much ready to go with the tortillas. Now I'm going to cook these um, my tortilla individu in individual pans. I've got four pans here. I'm going to cook two. And the other two are basically for flipping the tortilla over so we can colour the other side. I'm just going to add a little bit of oil into the pans. You want the pans hot and we're going to put the mix in. And fill those up. And we just want to leave those now to cook on that one side. So while I'm waiting for those, I can get my salad ready. What I'm going to do for a salad is something quite sharp. So the tortilla is going to be very rich. So I want something that's going to cut through that. I'm just going to get my fennel. Just take down one side. Just grate some fennel to a bowl. And I've got some chicory here, or Belgian endive as it's known as, and I'm just going to take the stalk out of that and chop that nice and finely. That's going to go into the salad as well. I'm going to put some of the, uh, the fennel fronds in there as well. And then I've got caper berries. 
which pickled, nice and crunchy, beautiful fresh marjoram, and that'll be a nice perfume to the salad and earthiness. I'm going to be ready to turn these tortillas very shortly. We use these at the restaurant, these tortilla pans, and what we, what we normally do is, when they're sealed on one side, we put them under a grill to finish on the top, so you've basically got a seal. But uh, today we're just using two pans to flip them over, and this is actually the classic way of, that's how they do them in Spain, and flip them. Okay, so there you go. And I'm going to flip this one over now. Okay, just in the pan. So I'm just going to give these another couple of minutes. As I say, I want them rare inside, and then we can finish the salad. And here I've got some Moscatel vinegar, which is from the uh, Moscatel grape, or Muscat grape, and it's very sweet. This seasoning in the salad. Just mix that through. And then a little bit of olive oil. There we go. That's the salad ready to go. OK, so my tortillas are there now. I can just, if you just press it, there's a little bit of a, a spring to it, and that means they're going to be just nice and molten inside. And this should just slide out onto the plate. So you've got your beautiful tortilla and then lovely fresh salad. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, Hamel Iberico Manchego tortilla with uh, fennel, chicory, uh, marjoram, caperberry salad. It has a really great kind of creamy texture. It looks kind of impressive, like you kind of spend a lot of time making it. Yeah, it's really nice. I think this is a recipe I'd like to try the children at home. But I really like kind of the, the warm texture of the Manchego cheese. I agree. <laughs> After watching how easy it was to prepare, I think this some kind of definitely will be trying at home in the future. Hamel and Berico and Manchego tortilla with fennel, chicory and caperberry salad. It's a great spin on a Spanish tapas. Thanks, Ben. Joining me now is a chef who rose to fame cooking for the Queen, President Bush and Bono. But it's creating family-friendly food that's made him a household name in Ireland. Kevin Dundon, you are very welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here, Rachel. It's lovely Fantastic. to see you again. Now, you are going to be cooking something from your fantastic new cookbook, Great Family Food. Yeah, what's great about this recipe, which is actually spiced lamb burgers, but the kids love yeah. it. And it's a great way of getting them to eat spices through the meat. So what, we, what, what we need for that is that we have some fresh eggs, yep. onions, tomatoes, parmesan and cheese, cos lettuce, um, flat leaf parsley or coriander, and then we have um, ground mince, okay, and then so to make our chutney we've got some um, white wine vinegar, chilies, and some cinnamon and brown sugar. So Great. The best thing to do is to start off with this is to make our chutney. Okay. Really simple to do. Okay, you just chop up your chop tomatoes. Chop tomatoes with the skins on? With the skins on. Great. And the onions. Throw yeah. that into your pot to get that going. And today we're going to put in some Flakes, as much as you like, are as spicy oh, 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 as hot as you like. like. Okay, some cinnamon in there then as well. Now this dish, I was very impressed here, comes in at £1.46 per person. Yeah. It's our food for under a fiver. I think what's hilarious about this book is that I wrote, started writing this about a year and a half ago. And I must have had this fantastic crystal ball because it's so apt for the credit crunch. Yeah. Because there's even a chapter on leftovers in it. So. So we've got in here the tomatoes, the onions, the chili flakes, Ch cinnamon. Cinnamon. And now we're going to put in some white wine vinegar. And white wine vinegar. Now, to make yeah, our burgers, it's one of the things. we've got some chopped onions and yeah. coriander. Okay. We've got some lovely ground mm. And this is when you get and your that's kids involved. Nice. Doesn't look too lean. A no, bit of you, fat know, you want that little bit of fat to yeah. keep it moist. It's another great thing to keep a burger moist is a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Oh, gorgeous. Do you want to grate some Yeah, in? if you grate some, okay. some of that in. Just find a grate like that one there. Yeah, please. Okay. We put one egg in there, and the egg actually binds the burger. Gordon, what do you feed your kids with at home? Or do you? Or do you? Or do you, do you just send them out there to get fed for themselves? <laughs> if, I can, if I can get away of not feeding them this, and of course that's the way forward. But sausages, I like the idea of these burgers. There you go. That's yeah. too. Simple. So we've got breadcrumbs, grated parmesan, chopped red onion, coriander, the mince As you can lamb, imagine egg. now, you've got your three kids up on stools around you with their hands in here. Daddy, daddy, daddy. daddy, daddy. Uh, can I help? Can I help? Okay, if you want yeah, and the hand goes in the here and the hand in, goes yeah. over no, it's there. That's perfect. No, it's perfect. That's what's fun about food. If you put some flour in that plate there, okay. we're gonna, just going to shape these burgers. Like okay, that there? So yeah, it's just like, they can all decide what size they want to eat. Lovely. In so if you just want to mold it like that, drop it into flour. Yeah. And just make a nice little patty like that. Simple. Do you have a restaurant in Disneyland? Yes, one down town on, on Pleasure Island called Ragnar Road. It's a gastro yeah. pub, very kid friendly. Right. And then we have our second restaurant in Kansas City. We have two. Yeah, myself, oh, wow. and, myself and Dorothy. Love you Dorothy. And Dorothy. Yeah. I love red shoes actually. Click it's your really red cool. heels. Yeah, so there we go. <laughs> we drop that in. Okay. Okay, we're going to give that a minute on either side, sorry. 
Okay. okay. Are both going to the sink together. That's great. So you get to go over there a little bit. I'm actually over there eight, eight weeks a year. Eight so. weeks a year. Wow. Yeah, but I bring the chefs over to Dumbrody as well. So it's right. kind of, we do a little bit of both. Kevin, do you Brilliant. get a discount when you take the kids over there as well? It's, yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's, but you know what? The last time I was there, I brought the kids and we went to all the parks and we got us fortunately complimentary, which is fantastic. But I tell you, they certainly know how to extract money out of you once you're in the parks. Because <laughs> you can't say no to the, to the kids. Like, their I eyes know, are there. Yeah. And like, you have to go for it. So. Okay, we're going to pop those into the oven. Okay. And there we have burgers. So these have been in the oven for? About 15 minutes. Perfect. Lovely. We just slice our buns in half. Okay. okay? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to build these guys up then. Great. Can I help? Yep. If you, if you put a little dollop of uh, mayonnaise on that. Okay. On each of them. Kevin, how long do you need to cook the, the, the relish for? The it's about 40 minutes. Right. But what's great about it is like Sunday afternoon, yeah. make a whole pot of it. It'll last up to a year in your mm. store cupboard. And so. so this is the one that's been cooking. Oh, exactly. Yum. So we're just going to... I love chutney. Sausages, yeah, cold meats, yeah, anything. Cheese. Cheese, yeah. It's just like, you know that snack at 10 o'clock at night that you... Yes. They're just like nibbly for something. Yeah. A yeah. nice piece of cheddar right in the fridge. Yeah. Lovely bit of uh, chutney. And chutney. Okay, just put a bit of chutney on it. Lovely. Lovely. If you help me there. Perfect. Oh, this just looks like something for a balanced diet, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it looks great. You've got your five a day plus the protein. What do, you, what do your children love eating? Say, after school, are your children starving when they come home from school? Yeah, they are. are. They're always looking for just like a quick snack when they come home yeah. from school. And then. Uh, We'd have dinner around 5.30. I think it's important right. that we eat together before yeah. service in the restaurant. So uh, <laughs> the kids will eat basically everything because I don't believe in making two or three meals for them. So I totally it's like agree. you eat what's, what's coming to you yeah. and, and Yeah, enjoy and you don't it. give them a choice. Well, you know, within reason, but you can kind of say this yeah, is no, what no, we're no, eating absolutely. as a family. There's no choice. Yeah. So what you have here is your spiced lamb burgers, fit for any family. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> Make today's food for a fiver recipe, Kevin's spiced lamb burgers. You will need minced lamb from your butcher, plus tomatoes, red onions, fresh coriander, and lettuce from your greengrocer, and bread, small bread rolls, ground coriander, soft brown sugar, dried chili flakes, white wine vinegar, free range eggs, mayonnaise, and parmesan from your deli. And make sure you have ground cumin, ground cinnamon, and flour in your store cupboard. And all that comes to just £1.46 per serving. So, Golton? Are you enjoying yourself there? This is really good. <laughs> really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Matthew? What I say is, is Kevin, you know, this is a top burger. A relish, a relish, or I chuckle over your chutney, whatever you like to call it. <laughs> but most of all, I thank you for actually getting Rachel to try and get that all into her mouth at once, because it was worth every <laughs> moment of it. <laughs> it's really a high well. comedy moment of the day. <laughs> Go on, do it again. Kevin, thank you Rachel. so much. Do it again, no do it again. Problem. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> not a burger lover but I really enjoyed that and I love the sweetness of the relish with burger but I maybe would put a little bit more spice in it because I quite like spicy food. I will make them at home because they were simple to make, easy to eat and absolutely gorgeous and the relish, beautiful, really lovely. Join us after the break when we'll all go head to head to pimp up that British classic, the cucumber sandwich. But first, here are five ways to get the best out of breadcrumbs. Next time you end up with a stale loaf, try one of these five breadcrumb recipes before you bin your bread. Each recipe costs under one pound per serving. Fry the breadcrumbs with some chilli and garlic, then once golden and crisp, mix in spaghetti and serve with fresh parsley. Next, take a large mushroom and fill with breadcrumbs and garlic, then top with parsley and parmesan and bake until a delicate crust forms over the softened mushroom. Next up is a simplified take on a classic bread sauce. Combine milk, butter, shallots, nutmeg and breadcrumbs, mix until thick and serve. For a retro sweet treat, melt golden syrup and butter, then add breadcrumbs, fill a pastry case and then bake until piping hot. Finally, for a healthy alternative to chips, make squash wedges and serve with toasted breadcrumbs, chilli flakes and some dollops of soft goat's cheese. Every day.
Kitchen. Hello, the cucumber sandwich dates back to Victorian times when it was enjoyed by the upper classes while entertaining at tea parties. Since then, it has become a British classic with many fans, including Michelle Roux. Cucumber sandwiches. I love the good English cucumber sandwiches. Some would argue that it shouldn't be messed around with, including me. But today we're taking that quintessentially British sarnia and pimping it up with our very own ingredients. However, <laughs> before we do that, let me just read you a few things, facts from um, the, the original recipe in all its glory, as according to Lady Penelope Holmes, wife of the former British ambassador and co-author of Sandwiches, a book advising the French on the art of sandwich making. Always a very good thing, I think, to advise the French on by almost anything. <laughs> anyway, apparently you should slice this ear your cucumbers 20 minutes before preparing the sandwiches, sprinkle them with salt, then taste them, then decide whether they're table salted, wash the salt off, pat them dry with paper towel. It doesn't make sense, the bread mm. doesn't go soggy. Listen, it's fine if you've got 18 servants to do this all for you, which yeah. presumably, as yeah. wife of the British ambassador, she had. But we had all had to do our own. This is true. So, Golden, Golden how right. do you pimp yours up? Oh, this is, this is easy to pimp up because mine isn't a million miles away from this one. So I'm, I'm, I've, classic. I've got lovely question. fresh bread, I've got Philadelphia cream cheese, cucumber, slices with seasoning, and I've got egg mayonnaise and chive. And the crusts are taken off and it looks a damn sight more presentable than that one. <laughs> that, is not, that is not a sandwich, that is not a cucumber oh, sandwich. That's like a triple decker. Amy, that's that's that? a triple decker, yeah. that's a modern version. Mm, lovely. lovely. I, I like that, it's just quite simple. Excuse egg and cucumber, me. great combination. That is a classic chef Sorry, thing, Matthew, is I'm it using you vegetables <laughs> as a garnish. <laughs> The cucumbers are garnished, not a formal part of the sandwich. Oh, what, about what, about your garnish. Garnish. what about yours? What about yours? That looks this? interesting. Right, now this is a little bit of an Eastern influence cucumber sandwich. So I've got crunchy peanut butter, then thinly sliced cucumber, and some sweet chili sauce. Mm. So that go on. Really oh, yeah. I mean, sweet chili sauce and, pe and peanuts are great. So it's creamy, but you get the creaminess mm. of it's the peanut butter. Sandwich. Yeah, you get um, the spiciness of the chili sauce and the coolness of the cucumber. And clearly homemade because you haven't cut the crusts off. Mm. I like the crust. Very, they give you curly hair. <laughs> it's very much like an American take on oh. the oh. <laughs> oh. peanut butter and jelly and turning. <laughs> Don't you like yes. that? It's been, oh, I I'd like it. I don't have too much of a problem with it, but. Yeah, I mean, flavours are quite good. No, it Can I point out? But <laughs> now, what you've all missed out on is the essential element of textural contrast here, which is why I've put cheese and onion crisps in mine. No. Cheese and onion crisps. They season it, because that's what the cheese and onion do, and they give a little textural contrast. You see all the crisps have fallen out, but do try it. I do recommend it. Give <laughs> it a go. You. No, no, honestly, Maybe honestly, I'm believe you me. Yeah. But is this the right thing to be serving with your little Crump. of Earl Grey tea? Delicious. Yeah, why not? Tom, we're democratising the cucumber sandwich from the home of the ambassador to the humble, no, my cottage. I'm kind of... Yes, mm. Amy? I Cheese and onion crisps give you bad breath. Cheese and onion Okay, Rachel, try I'm, to I'm actually, I, I hate to admit it, but it's kind of working. <laughs> oh, Rachel, I just mm. love you. You see, she's got a mind. <laughs> now, what now, about yours? But not as good as mine. Hmm. Mine is just, again, a great, um, good combination of flavours. Cucumber is very good with stronger flavours. I've got in my sandwiches Thank you. a green olive mm. tepanade, which has got anchovies in it as well, so it's good and gutsy. And then you've got the cool feta cheese, so it's good mm. balance mm. of textures and flavours. Golden, which is your favourite cucumber sandwich? No. Unaccustomed to bigging myself up too much, it's got to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Golden, <laughs> Amy, come on. Well, I do like Galton's, but I like Rachel's even more. Oh, really tasty. Mm. Well, to be honest Good with taste. you, I'm here, I go for the purity, but I like Lady Holmes's because I think it's actually a very, very oh, good purist. sandwich. Um, maybe Galton's. Galton, uh, walk uh, tall, walk, walk tall. tall. Thank you, thank you, ladies. And that's as bad as much as I could you take for one day. Well, no, no, you didn't draw a boat for me, did you? Excuse me. <laughs> that's, as, that's as much as I could take for one day. That's it. That's it for today. Join us next time when Galton is back to cook his chef's lunch, spicy chicken legs. <laughs> and Ching Hei Wang returns to make her roast pork pastry pie. See you then. Mm. <laughs> My favourite recipe today was the trout. It was summer on a plate, the trout was moist, 
the asparagus had a nice bite to it and the hollandaise sauce was lighter than air. I had a great day, a brilliant experience seeing all the top class chefs up close and Matthew and Rachel are superb. It's been great having some tea time treats today on Market Kitchen and sharing them with Rachel and Matthew.